who's to blame if the balls don't make the sweet 16 that will also be our poll question on youtube momentarily john as our guest i'll begin with you who's to blame if the balls don't make the sweet 16 because if you go by rankings they have been a top five-ish team the entire season therefore you would think you should make at least the elite eight if they don't make the sweet 16 whose fault is it john well, I think most people will blame Rick Barnes. He might not, but most people will. It goes back to his track record of doing well in the regular season, not so well in the postseason. Tennessee has the same track record. So ultimately, he's the guy that gets the blame. He's the captain of the ship. Uh, I think player-wise, if they falter, when you look at the stats and wins and losses, it will probably fall on the veteran players, Hazard, Jordan, James, and uh, Santiago Vescovi. Uh, Vescovi, I think he's averaging about three points per game in the last seven games. In seven of Tennessee's eight losses, uh, Triple J was eight of 42 from the field. I mean, I mean Dave, you might could go eight of 42 from the field if you had a, like a ladder to stand on or something, shoot over. Guys. I'm not a good but, shooter. Yeah, so that. Oh, by myself? You what? Yeah, I could do by myself, just at the gym, I could hit one of three shots. Yeah, well, I could he, do that. He's not even hitting twenty percent in those losses. Oh, yeah, that's something. I ca yeah, Caleb, Caleb, we could both do that. Uh, I don't know if we could do it against stiff competition. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, everybody. So today's tough question, Caleb: If the balls don't make it past the sweet sweet sixteen, it will be blanks' fault. I mean, I'm with John. It will be Rick Barnes' fault. I mean, yeah, it's just going to be Rick Barnes' fault. I, I'm, I, I can't even go any, <laughs> any, any different. I'm sorry. Because I, even if I, – I, I'm telegraphing this. No matter what happens, if Tennessee doesn't make the Sweet 16, I'm going to blame Rick Barnes. Because even if something happens like, I don't know, Zakai Ziegler just has an awful game in the round of 32 versus Texas, let's say. I'm going to blame Rick Barnes for playing Zakai Ziegler too much during the season then uh, because I've been critical of that the whole time. So, yeah, no matter what, I am blaming Rick Barnes. If they don't the Sweet 16. Let me tell you who it's going to be, guys, the way the season's going to play out. If it ends in a negative fashion, I'll tell you. It's, it's not Rick Terry, but Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals, a Tennessee tradition? Go to Rick Terry Jewelry. Dot com Rick Terry Jewelry dot com Stalton Connect guys if Tennessee's having trouble scoring we saw in that Auburn game that Rick Barnes is going to say all right boys let's huddle up over to the sidelines out in the corner and let Dalton do something they didn't go that route in their past two losses why I'm not sure but as Caleb has pointed out I'm not sure how much they cared about the SEC tournament Guys, if they go in that direction and they put all the pressure on him, I was there in person in the stands, thanks to uh, uh, Banks and Jones, T. Scott Jones. We certainly appreciate that. And I was in the stands for that Auburn game, and it was up to Connect to bring them back. And I think in desperation mode, they'll go that way in the NCAA tournament. And I'm not blaming Connect if he misses a shot, because I don't necessarily think he will. But if this ends in a negative fashion, it's probably because Connect has missed a clutch shot at some point coming down coming down the pipe. John, thoughts? <laughs> Nobody should bring, uh, blame Dalton Connect. He's the reason this team got as far as it did. I mean, you look at the Kentucky game, Dalton Connect didn't do what he did against Auburn, even though he scored 40 points. His accuracy wasn't as good. And what happens after the game? Rick Barnes talked about he's got to be aware of his open teammates and get them the ball. Well, Triple J got the ball and open shot three at the end of the with a chance to tie with about 20 seconds to go. And you know where that ball landed. I, I just think uh, Barnes is always harping on that about, you know, look for the open man. And I think Dalton Connect does a really good job of that. But if I were guarding Tennessee, if I were defending Tennessee, I would guard Dalton Connect hard 
let him make the pass and just count on those other guys missing the shot. I I would too. And I hate it because if my scenario plays out, Caleb Dalton connects going to be like the villain. He, he missed the shot. No, late. Dave, how, how could he be the villain? My gosh. Not villain. Villain's the wrong word. Can I change that up a little bit? No, you said it. You're stuck with it. Go ahead, Caleb. Okay. He's well, is this, <laughs> no, Caleb. This don't go ahead. He's going to be remembered as a scorer who didn't perform in the clutch, which is unfair. Let me say that. Well, well of course it's a, he won't be remembered that way. He he won the game against Auburn with making shots with guys all over him. All right, Caleb. What do you say? This whole That's scenario kind of reminds me of um, John. I don't know. I don't know if you guys remember this, but you guys will find this funny. There was an Allen Iverson interview a few years ago when people said he took too many shots with the Sixers, and his quote was, well, if I pass the ball to Kevin Matumbo, and he passes it to Theo Ratliff, and he passes it to Eric Snow, and he passes it to Aaron McKee, and Aaron McKee passes it back to me, and there's two seconds left on the shot clock, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and that seems like... <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and that seems like a uh, situation with the uh, Dalton Connect, what John was bringing up. And I... I'm actually, Dave, I'm still with John because, yes, Dalton Connect, you expect – this team is not in a situation where, yes, Dalton Connect is a leading scorer. He's the guy that shoots them out of offensive funks. But if you really look at the offense, they actually run an offense. They run a motion offense where they do try to see who's going to score and who's got the open look. They just turn to Dalton Connect when they're desperate for a bucket and they need something. And so it's not like it's not really designed the way you would think a team like, you know, a, a, a team like that has Kevin Durant and you're just trying to make sure you can get Kevin Durant the ball wherever he is on the court and have him score every time. It's not really set up that way. So I think if they lose, it will it will be because they're tired. It will be because they're mentally drained. I said from the start, this team goes as Jonas Adu goes. They again, the, the team, if you look at the SEC regular season, it was pretty much win or loss whether or not Joe Nisadu got double figures determined whether or not they won or lost. And so adu has got to really be a force down low. I mean, against St. Peter's, he should. His tallest defender is 6'7", 185 pounds. Okay, if Joe Nisadu can't get like 30 points, <laughs> then that's a problem. But it's, I'm sorry, Caleb, go ahead. Yeah, but I think that if if they if he doesn't do that or if Don't Connect misses shots or if Zakai Ziegler can't slash to the basket the way he's been doing, I'm going to say it's because they're tired, and I'm going to say they're tired because Rick Barnes ran them way too much, played them way too many minutes during the season. Okay, I don't want my scenario to play out. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. But I, the reason I go with Dalton Connect is I think he's going to take um, a final shot, and if he misses it, that's going to be what's remembered, unfortunately. And I think for the first time I saw in that SEC tournament, him slam the ball down, and like he's getting a little frustrated. The guy I'd be frustrated with most is – uh, Santiago Vescovi. I mean, my goodness. I wrote a column that it's time to put him on the bench uh, to start the game, and he can perhaps provide you a spark at the first TV timeout. John, with the way he's been playing, is that a stupid idea? Because I, I really didn't have anybody disagree with me on social media. No, I agree with you. Um, he has no confidence in his shot. I, I mean – there's as much chance of him uh, knocking down, breaking the, the backboard as there is of him making a three right now. He just, he has no confidence. And, and shooting is all about confidence. Um, I know, Dave, you have a lot of confidence in your shot, and that's probably why you do so well. No, I, actually, I'm a terrible, I admit I'm a terrible shooter. Now, if you want to go play racquetball. I, no. Or, yeah. I, I was kidding. I, I, I could just tell looking at you that you were a horrible shooter. I can spot those things. Uh, no, Vescovy, he plays hard, um, but he, he can't get rid of the ball fast enough when it's passed to him. He, he's throwing it to somebody else. Going back to uh, Caleb's Allen Iverson analogy, he, he's looking for Allen Iverson. I, I think, uh, no, that's not a bad idea. I thought the same thing uh, watching that game the other day against Mississippi State, whether it mattered or not. Uh, I would try and give more minutes to somebody else. If you don't have any confidence in your shot and you're not going to take an open shot, so you're no help on offense. Uh, Vescovy is a very good defender, but I really think, 
and maybe this has to do with how hard Tennessee practices. I just think he looks a step slow to me. He does. Now. He no, he does. He does. And Caleb, I want you to weigh in on this too. I just doesn't look like the same player. So he looks a step slow. And the other thing, Caleb, he looks like he's sometimes pulling the string on his shot. And I pointed that out before. That's a sign of a lack of confidence. I don't know why. I know he's been through personal issues. I don't want to call him out. But, Caleb, this is not even close to the same player that he's been previous in his career. Yeah, and, well, you guys have brought up consistently. um, Dave, you've consistently talked about the change in the offense. So just the – the, it's not that there's no screening in the high-low motion offense, which is what Rick Barnes has changed to because he has Dalton Connect. But the he, Rick Barnes for most of his career ran mostly the flex offense. And the reason – and that was kind of – that's actually what Bruce Pearl ran. And that's what Tom Davis taught. And there's a lot of backdoor screening on um, the flex offense, which was able to allow Viscobi to get open a lot of times to take shots. He's got to get – he's, he's kind of – in the high-low – you're kind of on your own to kind of get open. And Dave, you brought this up. We're seeing that he just can't get open the way he usually can. And now, even when he is wide open, like guys, I, that's not even a fair thing to say because last Saturday I or last Friday in the SEC tournament, Muscovy was about as open as you could possibly be. Mississippi State was in a one three one half the game, and he still was hitting bricks. I think, I think because he wasn't getting open so consistently in rhythm all year, he's now just completely out of rhythm and completely in a funk. And so I just, it, it's got to be a confidence factor at this point because the fr- before Friday, I would have said it's the change in the offense, but Friday he was, he was, he was standing at the top of the key and they were just letting him shoot and he was missing. John, could you frame this within the team as Santi? We're trying to do you a favor here. We think that coming off the bench may actually help you. And double question, bad journalism. Would you want to make that drastic of a change this late in the season, John? Well, I think uh, throughout the season, it's imperative to make changes when necessary. I don't think you can consider, oh, it's the NCAA tournament. We can't dare make them dare make them change here. Maybe that maybe that would help him. I just wonder if it would at this juncture, though. I, I mean, it gets down to. Uh, it might like not I help said, him. Confidence. It might not yeah. help him. But it might help the team. I mean, he's a liability. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, I think you were right on it. What, what you opened with and what you said, maybe it's time to put him on the bench. I, I think, yeah, you need to to give those minutes to somebody else uh, because it's uh, the way things are going. I know he plays hard defense. He, the, he's always played hard defense, but as I said. He looks a step slow to me this season. And go back to the Kentucky game. Kentucky Kentucky guards, and I know they're very good. They're NBA players. They constantly beat, beat Tennessee off the dribble and got, got in the lane consistently. It, it just so, yeah, why not play him? I would, I would at least be – I would be conscious of wanting to play him fewer minutes in this NCAA right. tournament. I'm with you, but the flip side is Rick Barnes will tell you he's the hardest worker on the team. I've never thought he was dogging it when I've watched him. That's a tough guy to bench. It's easier for guys more like James Banks than Santiago Viscovi. Um, wow. if, if you got that, yeah, random champ. Where, where, where did yeah. that come from? Okay, if balls don't make it past the Sweet 16, it will be Blank's fault. Triple J... Rick Barnes, Santiago Viscovi, or Dalton Connect. For the first time ever in one of our poll questions, one one choice does not have a single vote, and that's Dalton Connect, which was my selection because I think he'll be put in a bad position. I want to be real clear. People defending Dalton Connect, I love him. I was the first one to tell you he's one of the best players in the nation. But I think he's going to be put in a bad situation, and people are going to remember him as a missed shot. I hope. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Now, Caleb, let me ask you this. If they were to not start Vescovi, what would be the options as you see them? I've got my thoughts, but I would think Ganey would be one. What are the other possibilities? Rick Barnes, less defensive. If it's not Vescovi, he's going to start Jemai Meshack. 
at that point. Um, because honestly, let's be honest, everybody everybody talks about the great defensive effort Viscovi gives to keep him on the court. To my Meshach's actually a better defender. So oh, yes. Viscovi's in the starting lineup because of what he can bring offensively. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's Johnny's absolutely right. And the thing that I like about the Ganey idea, particularly you're right, um, about getting better defense out of Moshek. But the thing I like about Ganey is he can be hot and cold. So if he starts and he's cold, well, then you've got an even better reason to bring Viscovi off the bench. Yeah. Um, Meshack is, is considered a lockdown defender. Um, so he gives you something there. I think in, in general, in the NCAA tournament teams that play better defense because, um, Defense is so much about motivation, effort, and everybody's motivated in the NCAA tournament. You know you lose, you go home. Everybody's motivated. I think it comes down to making shots, making tough shots. That's all the NCAA tournaments I've covered through the years. The teams that got on a roll often were hitting well for Hey, sometimes an inside guy too. And more than one guy got hot. So I think I kind of like, I know, I know Ganey is kind of a wild card because he, you know, he's hot or cold, but if he's cold, you send him back to the bench. But if he gets hot, I mean, he could win a game for you in the NCAA tournament. So I would give him some of those minutes too. I agree. John's appearance every Tuesday brought to you by our good friend at Newbert Collision Center. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. Joe Newbert Collision Center. So we reset the poll question. Would you bench Santiago Viscovi? I say yes. John, you say, are yeah. you in agreement? Okay, Caleb, sure. would you make that big of a change at this point in the season? Yeah. For, for any other reason, then I actually agreed with your column on it, uh, Dave, you wrote about, which is if you put Viscovi to the bench, it could be kind of the thing he needs to get his mentality right. And he could come off the bench and be a massive threat offensively. I'm with you. I don't, I don't understand why they're not doing that. It's, it's, it's a little... I understand the reluctance because he is such a team player and so grand and so great and done so much for the Vols. Uh, th this is a far different question, John. We th we all think he should come off the bench, and that's our poll question on the YouTube page. Please take part. Does anybody think that Rick Barnes will really make that move? I would be surprised if he did. And Rick Barnes is hardly alone in this in this case because coaches become loyal to players. And I think he's really loyal to Vescovy because of all he's put into the program. Remember, he's an all-SEC player. Vescovy is. He's made all-SEC. He looks nothing like an all-SEC player now. But Rick Barnes has a history with him. Uh, Vescovy didn't have to come back this season, uh, but he did, as did Josiah Jordan James. Uh, in fact, he came back as a walk-on. They, they didn't want him to come back, and he chose to come back. So I think Barnes is really loyal to those players. They've had some some really good moments here, and, and they are not lacking in effort. And as you brought up earlier, when players exude effort, coaches that matters so much to coaches it matters to teams too but still at the end of the day in basketball you got to put it in the basket and if you're not doing that it doesn't matter how hard you're playing it's not the most compli uh, complicated game you got to put it in the basket john still remembers uh, taking the ladder and getting it out of the peach basket uh caleb yeah, do you think dunking it in a peach basket tearing the peach basket down what I you were the first one to open up the bottom of the peach basket, and everybody's like, my goodness, why didn't we think of that? Yeah, those idiots. <laughs> Naismith's like, oh, Adam's guy's bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, do you think there's any chance Rick Barnes does this, or are we just all 
having a good time talking about it. No, he doesn't do this. Rick Barnes is super stubborn as it is, and he has his own philosophies and his own beliefs. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's willing to run his team into the ground because he doesn't believe in letting up in practices and also because he believes you earn playing time. So he's not going to play backups if he doesn't believe they've earned playing time, and he doesn't care if that tires his starters out for the NCAA tournament. <laughs>